if that makes sense. I mean, for me, it does. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of uh, a good friend of mine's, uh, Alfred Coach Powell. We actually penned a book where I worked in his book with him called Hip Hop Hypocrisy, which talks about uh, when the lies begin to sound like the truth. I know earlier you mentioned this notion of rap. Well, I, may, I draw a distinction, and the distinction is, is that what we're seeing today uh, predominantly being portrayed in mass media is not what I call rap. It's, 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 it's giving you images of thugism, gangsterism, and those are considered people that are on the fringe, people that are on the outside of mainstream society, and generally those are folks that are expendable. And so I don't want our children emulating those kind of behaviors, those types of attitudes. I don't want to out-thug you. Let's try to out-love one another. The building that's coming up across the street is absolutely state of the art. Uh, I know you haven't had an opportunity to tour it yet. They're still inside building, uh, but it is absolutely gorgeous. And you are going to be so proud of what is in your neighborhood. Have you got it up there? <laughs> uh, the school will serve 650 students birth through eighth grade. The first year, the school will uh, go to sixth grade and they'll phase in seventh and then they'll phase in eighth. But it is absolutely state of the art. Lots of technology and the schools are designed, intentionally designed to be community learning centers. And I say schools because there are actually two of them. There's one in the Glen Oak area that also has an impact zone. And there's one in the uh, in, in one in your uh, neighborhood as well. But the uh, both of these schools were designed so that um, we would be able to serve children on what we call a continuum of services from actually the time they're born or before they're born until they graduate from college. And we intend for every child that attends these schools to graduate from college. We have an opportunity, an additional opportunity, through the federal government to apply for some funding called uh, Promise Neighborhood. That's a Promise Neighborhood initiative. And Promise Neighborhoods is a model out of New York City, the Harlem Children's Zone, headed by a um, great individual called Jeffrey Canada. We had been looking at that model for some time in, in, as we were developing our new buildings here. And what the things that we liked about those, the, the, that model is that, first of all, that pipeline from birth to college, the fact that um, they had what is called, they call that the conveyor belt or the, or the, or the pipeline. Uh, the other aspect that we liked about the, the program was that they, they had a concept called the tipping point. And in the tipping point, they knew that if they could get the buy-in of the people in the community, the neighborhoods surrounding the schools, and they could get people to uh, have the same vision and adopt the same approaches to working with and supporting children's learning, that they could tip the odds. If you could get 65% of the people in your community to all have the same vision and adopt and embrace the same ideas, you can tip the odds in the, in, in the children's favor. So that was another aspect that we really liked about the model. Our president, Obama, became very interested in the Harlem Children's Zone and decided he wanted to replicate that model across the country. So right now, there is a grant opportunity out there for us to um, write for a Promise Neighborhood Grant. We have a group of people in our community, stakeholders, that have come together. Uh, many of them you'll know. And uh, they've come together and they've created a planning board they went through a process also of identifying a lead agency because the grants for promised neighborhoods are awarded not to school districts, 
but to nonprofit organizations. So we went through a process of selecting a nonprofit agency. And the end result of that process is that um, PCCEO, the Community Action Agency, and I see Ms. McFarland Bragg back there, it was selected as the lead agency to, to lead us and guide us in this initiative for the Promise Neighborhoods. Um, Harlem's Children's Zone, by the way, is, is about children's achievement, but it, it goes beyond student achievement. It is, it's also about changing a community, because we know that it's not just about what schools do, but it's how neighborhoods and communities support children's learning. And I'm going to have to move around. Are you, are you going to okay, go up to the next slide? Okay, this is where I was talking about the conveyor belt and tipping the, the, uh, the odds. Uh, and also, and you'll like this, and we, we really um, were, were interested in the fact that in the, in the Harlem Children's Zone, they got rid of the silos. You know what I mean by silos? What we mean by silos is that when you have, as Peoria does, lots of resources out there in your community, and I think Peoria has lots of resources, but individual programs working by themselves, instead of all coming together and sharing those resources and making them more accessible to the families in the, in the community. Getting rid of those silos is very important. Go on to the next slide. So in our, what our, uh, we've developed a planning board that is now led by PCCEO, and there are a number of agencies, businesses, um, and so forth in, involved on that planning board, but we're missing a group. We need more community uh, members. We need people that live in this neighborhood to serve on that planning board. And I'm asking you, if you are interested in helping us to um, apply for this grant, but not just apply for a grant, it's not just about the money. It's adopting an approach to working together collaboratively to support our children and families in this community. And if you're interested in being a part of that planning board, I would like you to contact me or Mr. Bragg and express your interest because we absolutely need you and we need the input that you can provide to this whole initiative to make it successful. I can be reached at the school district and I'm going to have all the numbers on the, um, on the PowerPoint at the end of the slides. Okay. The grant is due on June 25th. Um, and we're working very hard, all our committees, to get that, to get to have that application done by then. I want to go to the next slide. Here are some of the agencies that are involved have made a commitment to the Promise Neighborhood Initiative. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a few, and this, these these individuals represent both the Manual or Harrison Home area as well as the Glen Oak Impact Zone. Our school district adopted a resolution supporting the Promise Neighborhood Initiative. Um, and uh, the city council also adopted a resolution uh, adopt, uh, supporting the, the Promise Neighborhood Initiative. There, that's what I want to show you. Community Learning Centers. I and mean, I haven't really had an opportunity to tell you a lot about what's going on in that building, but there's an article over here on the table that gives you much more detail about the specific uh, features of your new building. But one of the things I want you to understand, too, is you've had an e effort going on in this area with the full-service community schools, Garfield, Treewin, and Manuel High Schools, have adopted that community school model and have been doing some things along those lines for several years. We're going to enhance that. It's not a separate entity. We're all working together. 